Hello to everyone. This discussion is to bring out the significance of BSRP, that is, the Bengaluru Suburban Rail Project, to citizens, and how this will help ease traffic congestion and improve quality of life. We have with us Raj Dugar, founder of Citizens for Citizens, a commute enthusiast who will share his knowledge about BSRP. He has been closely following this project from the time before it was sanctioned in October 2020. So, Raj, how will BSRP add value to the current pillars of public transport? Uh, Namaskara and thanks, uh, Meghna. Uh, here is a startling fact. Uh, right now, Bengaluru has almost as many vehicles as there are people. It is globally accepted that the real solution to traffic congestion is different modes of efficient, effective and extensive public transport with tight integration between these modes. For Bengaluru, the three main pillars of uh, public transport are bus, metro, and suburban rail, apart from other useful modes like walking, cycling, cabs, autos, etc., which can be thought of as a fourth pillar. It is no rocket science that apart from walking and cycling, anything which encourages public transport and discourages motorized private transport will have a positive impact on the quality of life. Let me also add, a developed country is not one where the poor get to own cars. On the contrary, a developed country is one where the rich use public transport. Now, Bengaluru Suburban Rail Project is a new upcoming dedicated public transport system. About 10 lakh people daily can shift off the roads to BSRP along its four corridors, leading to a significant easing of traffic congestion on the roads which in turn will help improve quality of life here. Got it. Now, out of the public transport options for Bengaluru, people are generally aware of BMTC bus and BMRCL's Nama Metro and the role these play. However, with respect to suburban rail, people are generally unaware of the role it can play to ease congestion locally. Can you please elaborate? You're right. Uh, not many people are aware about BSRP and its potential. Here is an interesting fact. At present, within about uh, 60 to 70 kilometers radius from KSR City Railway Station, uh, Bengaluru already has 500 kilometers of tracks along with 70 railway stations. A current priority of Indian railways is freight and long distance trains, trains not uh, local commute. And for rail to become, become a sustainable and practical local commute option, there is obvious need for high reliability punctuality and frequency of services. Hence, partly leveraging some of the present railway infra, an exclusive dedicated suburban rail system for Bengaluru, which was researched several decades ago, is becoming a reality now. The proposed BSRP corridors are planned along existing railway tracks in most sections, of course, with new stations, tracks, etc. To check out the massive potential, one only has to look at how suburban rail is Mumbai's lifeline for decades now that's very true but before we get on to the present status of the project for the benefit of those who are unaware can you explain some of the important features of bsrp ashua meghna out of the bsrp's 148 kilometers along four corridors about 103 kilometers will be at grade or at ground level and uh, 45 kilometers will be elevated let me briefly touch upon the four corridors now, corridor 1, City Railway Station, Maleshwara, Yashwanpura, Yalahanka, Devanali with branch line to airport terminal. Its length is 41 kilometers and it will have 14 stations. The total cost is rupees 5,060 crores and this corridor has been named Sampi Gate. Corridor 2 is Bayapanali, Chik, I'm sorry, Banas, Banaswadi, Hebbal, Yashwanpura to Chikbanawara. The length is 25 kilometers with 12 stations. And the cost is 3,221 crores and it is named Malligay. The third corridor, Kengeri, City, Cantonment, Kearpura, and Whitefield, the length is total 35 kilometers with 13 stations and the cost is 2,828 crores and its name is Parijata. And the last corridor, which is the longest, Kilaligay, Belandur, Chanasandra, Yalahanka, Rajanakunte, total 46 kilometers with 19 stations and the cost is 4,000. 658 crores and its name is Kanaka. The name of names of these four corridors together form the very apt acronym Samparka, 
from Sampige, Mallige, Parijata, and Kanaka. And oh yes, here is the best part. Once the corridors are commissioned, the ends of the four corridors can be relatively easily, quickly, and economically extended to adjacent towns and beyond. Uh, for example, Rajan Kunte to Dorbalapura, uh, Chikbanavara to Tumkuru and Kunigal, uh, Kengeri to Ramnagara, uh, Hilalike near Electronic City to Ele Anekal Road or Hosur, uh, Whitefield to Bangarpet or KGF, and uh, Devanalli to Chikbalapura and Kola. These extensions will help decongest the roads further and also help develop these surrounding towns. That is when BSRP will become a true suburban rail system of Bangalore. Another reason for urgency to commission these four corridors on a war footing. Raj, I am aware that you have been highlighting the urgency for the corridor one. That is the airport corridor. Can you please elaborate as to why this is so important for the city? Interestingly, it was a sanction letter and government of Karnataka's own DULT which have highlighted the importance of airport corridor. Now, airport commute is presently 100% road centric and average daily footfalls at the airport, which are about 1.5 lakhs now, they are increasing. Now, all these to and fro vehicles are occupying significant road space across the city. From our side, we have listed 21 reasons to bring out the importance of BSRP's airport corridor. Unlike the 58 kilometers airport corridor, which goes along uh, the metro airport corridor, which goes along the outskirts, BSRP's airport corridor will start from the very heart of the city, covering a distance for 40 kilometers in about one hour. BSRP trains will run at a frequency of one every five to 12 minutes. Uh, this corridor will have good integration with both Indian railways and metro at uh, city and Yashwanpura. Uh, many new projects are coming up in the vicinity of the airport to the north of the city. This corridor can significantly reduce number of vehicles across the city, particularly what we see from uh, Chalukya Circle to Makri Circle to the infamous Herbal Flyover. For these and several additional reasons, we too hold the view that work on this corridor must be taken up on a war footing. This is about the four corridors, including airport corridor. What about BSRP's coaches, stations, etc.? The popular perception is that these trains will be like regular passenger trains? No, Meghna, this is wrong perception. Times are changing. BSRP trains and stations will be on par with Metro, if not better. They will be modern nine coach trains running with a frequency of, as I told, every five to 12 minutes along four corridors in both directions. Each train will have a carrying capacity of about 3,000 people, both sitting and standing. Maximum speed will be 90 kilometers per hour. Since BSRP's average interstation gap will be higher than metros, average speed of BSRP can be more than metros 34 kilometers per hour. Our dedicated BSRP stations and platforms will have good features, facilities, and amenities, and coaches will be air conditioned. K Right officials have explained that this will also improve fuel efficiency of the trains since windows and doors will be all closed leading to reduced drag. And uh, what about integrating BSRP with other public transportation modes, including the regular railways? I hope that this is being uh, taken care of. Uh, well, for any public transport mode to succeed, the key is tight integration with other modes. And for that, there will be several interchanges along the BSRP corridors to facilitate easy changeover from one corridor or mode to another. Out of the 58 stations planned in four corridors, 39 will be interchange stations. Out of these 39, five will have inter-corridor interchanges of BSRP itself. 23 stations will have interchanges with regular railway stations and 11 interchanges will be with Amamet. That's wonderful. Now, Raj, what is the current status of the project? And in terms of funding, what numbers have been projected? Well, as we all know, sanction was finally accorded on 21st October 2020 to build BSRP and K-Ride was tasked to complete the four corridors sanctioned by October 26, that is six years. K-Ride is a joint venture company between Ministry of Railways, Government of India and Government of Karnataka. The outlay for the four corridors of BSRP totaling 148 kilometers is rupees 15,767 crores. Uh, that's about uh, rupees one, 106 crores per kilometer. In comparison, cost of metro is about uh, 300 crores per kilometer for elevated and about 500 crores per kilometer for underground. 
You had mentioned October 2020 as the date when this project was sanctioned. We are now in August 23. That is about 34 months post sanction. Almost half the time is over. Are there any challenges faced by K-Ride in executing this project? Well, in such projects, uh, before real on-ground work starts, a lot of preparatory work needs to be carried out. Uh, this includes various types of surveys, identification and shifting of utilities along the corridors, various matters related to trees, um, land assessments, several stages for approvals with uh, Indian Railways, a clearance of encroachments, funding related, related matters, lots of documentation, etc. However, the delay in execution seen until now has been extremely worrying. So a few days ago, on uh, 15 July, uh, senior most officials of K-Ride graciously held the first such meeting with concerned citizens and uh, rain enthusiasts and made us aware of the different challenges and reasons for delays until now. These include the obvious COVID uh, challenge, then the land acquisition, waiting for approvals from different agencies and so on. But one of the biggest challenges is to carry out work along existing and functional railway tracks and stations, which are simultaneously being used regularly for freight and passenger train movements, which cannot be stopped. All right. Now, with this background, let me ask the important question. Has any work started? Then I'll take this corridor wise. Uh, for corridor one, which needs highest priority, we are still in pre-tender stage. For corridor two, uh, the, that's the only corridor where on-ground work started finally in December 22. Corridor three is still in preliminary stages of planning. Corridor four, tender was invited on 20 January this year and opened on 4th July. Uh, four bids have been received and are being evaluated. We hope corridor four tender will be awarded very soon and work will begin quickly. Okay. During your interaction with the officials, they have explained their side. But any pitch from concerned citizens and rail enthusiasts? Yes, 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 definitely. We specifically requested for wrapping up all tender related works for all four corridors within this calendar year, that is 2023, and to ensure on ground work starts on all corridors quickly. We have also requested for integration, tight integration with other modes of public transport. In addition, we have made several other requests to k -Ride. For example, uh, rainwater harvesting pits along the tracks, more grab poles for support, more comfortable seating and suitable baggage space in coaches, uh, emergency healthcare and heritage corners at stations, etc. For transparency, we have also requested for regular and timely updates on k -Ride websites pertaining to their works. We have also requested for regular interactions between k -Ride officials and concerned citizens. That's wonderful. With all the delays as of now, does either of the two deadlines of October 25 and October 26 seem doable? Meghna, I will say that the deadline to commission all four corridors by October 25, which is 26 months away, is impossible now. Although it should be retained as an important target. As far as target of October 26 is concerned, if our public representatives and concerned senior officials from both Government of Karnataka and Ministry of Railways continuously review, monitor and facilitate this pro project, then October 26 with intermediate deadlines still seems doable. So I would say October 25 will be a miracle and October 26 is doable. Let us see who takes up the challenge now. So broadly speaking, how would you compare BSRP with the other two modes of public transport? Now, these modes of public transport should not be viewed as competing with each other. Rather, they should be looked at as collaborating, coexisting, and complementing each other. BSRP will be fast and with much larger carrying capacity than BMTC. In addition, BSRP will also be more environment friendly, safe, and comfortable. Compared to Nama Metro, BSRP will be more economical to build. It will also have the most useful option of easy extension to surrounding towns. In addition, the disruption to road traffic that we experienced for years together due to uh, construction of Nama Metro will be minimal in the case of BSR. Awesome. So Raj, what would you like to convey in conclusion? And what should we as citizens do for this project? Well, in conclusion, I will say that BSRP is the need of the hour to complement the existing 
BMTC bus and Nama Metro. All three modes collectively will be able to reduce congestion and improve quality of life in Nama Bengaluru. We hope that all concerned authorities will ensure that this project does not face any further hurdles in terms of execution, funding, land acquisition, etc. Southwestern Railways, we hope, will proactively and quickly give considered approvals, hand over land required, and so on. And all opinion builders, experts, and corporate heads must add their voice for early commissioning of uh, BSRP corridors. Uh, media should continue to keep the citizens informed about the progress and significance of this project. The key to improving quality of life is to free the roads. So onus is on each one of us to ensure BSRP execution by urging the authorities with one collective voice for early commissioning. This is the least in the interests of all of us and our next generations. Thanks, Meghna. Thank you, Raj. Now we definitely have a better understanding of the significance of BSRP for the two crore people living in Bengaluru and the surrounding towns, the challenges faced, the current status of the project, and the way forward. This conversation will definitely help citizens understand the usefulness and the urgency of BSRP. In turn, this will lead to the citizens' pressure for timely execution by the authorities. You have made it very clear that BSRP is the solution that we are all waiting for to solve Bengaluru's globally infamous traffic congestion and all its consequences. Thank you.